Hello and welcome to Wild Perford. This is our October edition. I'm Tim Matthews. If you're new to Wild Perford, a special welcome to you. We're shining a spotlight on the various conservation activities in and around our village of Perford in Surrey. And there's quite a lot going on. Catch up by going to www.wildperford.com or simply go to our YouTube channel and type in Wild Perford. So what's in store on this month's show? We'll be discovering Perford's pre-Victorian watercourses with Joy Sashak. Well, the, gra the grasses are literally taking over at the moment. She's busy um, rewilding a golf course and discovering that um, still waters water. really do run deep. But we begin this October edition by visiting a beekeeper here in Perford to find out just why we can't do without them. Bees, that is. Carol Mitchell went to meet Marion Mulcher and a few of her friends. If we yes. come around here, mm -hmm. the bees entrance is at the front, mm -hmm. but we're going to come around here and work from the back. Now what you can see here is a frame of honey. Mm -hmm. And the bees are still working on it. So it's, it's inside, isn't it? Yeah. And it's completely filled that one frame? Yes. The bees have built all that wax and they are filling it and that's probably sweet chestnut honey wow. from here. A frame like this, this is a small super frame, it will, when, if that was a full one, that will probably hold about five pounds, five pounds of honey, um, but it's almost weightless. It, wow. It's an absolutely stunning, Amazing. stunning thing. You, as I say, you can do it, you can fill them, fill them with water and to see, mm. see how it does it. But, but yes, they're experts at packing. The, the actual comb is slightly, the cells are actually slightly sort of down like that, mm. so, that so that it keeps it in. They secrete the wax as well. Right, and seal it up. The, they, they're secreting wax up on, their, on their tummies mm -hmm. from the wax glands, and they will mould that in their mouths and put it into, uh, to, give, to give it the capping. It's fascinating, isn't it? There's so much they going are. on. There's masses going so on. So much engineering, but also chemistry and... Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. And they haven't really worried about us being here. No. This is the fruits of your bees' labour. Obviously, you have a, a part to play in that as well. But this is, this is an example of what we were talking about when we were standing at the hive, that they form these perfect hexagons. Yeah, they do. This and then they fill that with the, with the honey. And they, they build, their, they build the, the size of hexagon, depending on what they're going to use it for. So, we have honey. That's the product that people are most familiar with, of the, of the hive. And bees play a very important role. It's not just about providing honey for us. Absolutely not, no. Um, it is, pollination is an absolutely vital service. That, that bees, not just honeybees, but all kinds of bees, provide. And we would, we would be sorely lacking in our diets without it. Bees are very important, we've established that. Yes. Um, they're in decline. You know, you, the UK is one of the most nature depleted countries in the world. It so is. how do we in Perford help reverse that? What can we do? We can look after our habitat generally. We can ensure that we keep our open green spaces, that we plant nice friendly things in our gardens. We treasure our street trees. Collectively, these things can help. And actually, honeybees themselves aren't threatened, but many of our other species are. Carol was talking to Marion Mulcher, both looking rather fetching, I thought, in their beekeeping outfits. Well, last month we visited a golf course that's slowly turning into a wilderness. It's all part of a rewilding project that Joy and Akil Sashak are embarking on here in Perford. We visited a wild meadow that was once a golf tee, and this month we're returning to see what else needs the attention of Mother Nature. It was mid-August when Carol caught up with Joy by a drainage ditch. So Joy, tell me a little bit about this, this waterway here. What, what are we seeing here? Well, we know that this has been ditched for hundreds and hundreds of years, certainly long since pre-Victorian. 
Um, it hasn't actually been well ditched for a long time. So as you can see, my gardener's trimmed the grass here, ready to ditch with a digger that we've recently just purchased. Um, all of this grass, which is invading the ditch and stopping the ditch doing what it needs to do. The canal was built over um, our old ditch that goes um, out towards the broad ditch um, at the other side of the property. Um, yeah, hundreds and hundreds of years. And it was, it was done to drain the land. It was done so that they could um, plant crops and eat. But now, as the landscape under your guidance moves back to more of a natural state, what will be the, the role of this, of this ditch in that sort of vision? As we've got to know the land, and we've only, we've only owned it since December, so we are literally getting to know it. We have ponds, we have some large ponds, some little ponds, we have ditching, we have an ancient woodland, we have meadows, and the ditches have their own wildlife that I want to preserve. The last time we were here, um, when we were walking back, the place was just alive, quite literally, with, with frogs. Is it that was. something that do you think uses this habitat? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I'd like to think we've got water voles. Um, I'm told we have no more water voles in Surrey, but we certainly have some holes that look like water vole holes. And, uh, you know, I'd love to um, discover those. I have no idea whether I'm going to. Um, frogs, toads, newts, um, in, in our ponds, I haven't seen them in the ditches, but in our ponds, we've had a massive mayfly population this year, um, which is really, really exciting, actually. Um, we know that our mayfly population are going down, and we have a fantastic one here. That's amazing. So, as we keep saying, what you're trying to do here is very light touch, but this will take a little bit of management, because obviously you've got grasses growing here and you don't want them to to suck the life out of this. Uh, well, the, this. Gra the grasses are literally taking over at the moment and we need to dig this out um, so that the water, the water has a way of passing through. Um, it's, it, the, the grasses are literally going to fill it up. Carol Mitchell was talking to Joy Sashak. So we're coming to the end of the October edition of Wild Perford. If you'd like to make sure you don't miss any of our videos, then remember to press the subscribe button. And if you're on our mailing list, sounds a bit old fashioned that, doesn't it really? Well, all you need to do is absolutely nothing because each month will come to you. And talking of months, next month we'll have some practical help on building those habitats that attract wildlife back into your garden. But that's for next time. A special thanks to Carol Mitchell and, of course, to our contributors this month. If you're engaged on a conservation project or determined to arrest climate change by even the smallest of steps, then we'd love to hear from you. Email us at wildperford at gmail.com or visit our website www.wildperford.com. So, until next time, I'm Tim Matthews and this is Wild Perford. Mm -hmm.